I am the political dunce, and I am going to discuss the foxification of MSNBC. As you probably may have heard, the legendary liberal outlet is increasingly becoming right-wing. The core root of this is Comcast, who is willing to promote the right wing and work with them. According to Matthew Sheffield's article on Alternet, the main issue at play is net neutrality and how to approach it. Quick disclaimer, I happen to be a subscriber of Comcast, chiefly because that's what my landlord requires. According to Wikipedia, which you should take with a grain of salt, Comcast first started the acquisition in 2009 and would consume it completely in March 2013. But I would argue that MSNBC was vulnerable to foxification before Comcast was involved. For MSNBC was one of the many outlets to trumpet the Iraq War, pushed by the right-wing Bush administration. It is entirely possible that Jesse Ventura lost his show on MSNBC back in 2003 because of his opposition to the Iraq War. We can't prove that that was MSNBC's motive, but it certainly is fishy. But there are other reasons to be weary of Fox News 2.0. One is that they are eager to hire pundits and anchors from the original Fox News. Greta Van Susteren comes to mind. They also hired Brett Stevens of the New York Times climate change denial fame and conservative taco show host Hugh Hewitt. But the most infamous of these hires has to be Megyn Kelly. Yes, the same Megyn Kelly who said this. Unequal neighborhoods. They, they, they think too many com communities are too white, too privileged, with too big McMansions, too many big McMansions. And they, they want to diversify the communities, whether the communities want it or not. And I mean, I call it cupcake nation. That's what we're turning into, <laughs> cupcake nation. The new Black Panther Party, new Black Panther, the new Black Panther, the new Black Panther, the new Black Panther, new Black Panther, new Black Panthers, new Black Panthers. Let me explain you how it works. I'm the anchor, you're the guest, okay? Well, you're bringing race into this. You I'm are. He is undocumented... married to a Mexican he's, immigrant. He's... You sound like, with respect, to Osama bin Laden. What? With, with respect, okay. you don't seem to know what you're talking about. Yeah. Jesus was a white man, too. But, you, you know, it's like, we have, he was a historical figure. I mean, that's a verifiable fact. But because she asked Donald Trump one tough question during a presidential debate. You, you call women you don't like fat pigs? Dogs, sloths, and disgusting animals. She became a darling of the pseudo right, excuse me, left. The entire Clintonal erupted into glorious worship of Megyn Kelly. You are fascinated with sex, and you don't care about public policy. I will have to concede that Greta Van Susteren was recently fired on the grounds of poor ratings. But Megyn Kelly is suffering from poor ratings as well, and she is still at MSNBC. Granted, Greta has started back in January and Kelly only started in June, but if Kelly manages to hold on to her show by mid-2018 while failing to boost her ratings, serious questions would have to be raised. Especially since Greta actually did better than whatever show was airing the year before. But back to MSNBC, we need only look at a couple of liberal pundits on there. Rachel Maddow is notorious for talking about Russia. As long as she sticks with Russia and remains silent over single payer, Flint's residents being evicted over not paying for poison, the downsides of going to war, etc., she should be safe. Joy Ann Reed is another supposedly liberal pundit who every now and then is lionized by the pro clinton Facebook page, Conservatives Are Destroying Our Future. I think the following montage speaks for itself. So before we let Dr. Phil go, we wanted to ask him about entitlement culture in this nation. And that I think we embraced 
with a great degree of entitlement, where it's like the world owes me a living, and, but so entitled that he is won't take a job because it's not rock star job. This guy is a parasite, and my contention is that the Obama administration is encouraging parasites to mount and, you know, take as much as they can with no remorse. Finally, we have a president acting anything but presidential. You're running for president of the United States. I didn't start it. That, I didn't start it. Sir, with all due respect, that's the argument of a five-year-old. Written by a nice reporter. Now the poor guy, you got to see this guy. Oh, I don't know what I said. Oh, I don't remember. There was blood coming out of her eyes. Uh, blood coming out of her wherever, but... But the moment he fires Tomahawk missiles into Syria, suddenly he's presidential. Thinking about the missile strike. Uh, Malcolm, I want you to go into greater detail. We see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two U.S. Navy vessels in the eastern Mediterranean. I am tempted to quote the great Leonard Cohen. I'm guided by the beauty of our weapons. Uh, and they are beautiful pictures of, uh, of fearsome armaments making what is for them a brief flight over to this airfield. Malcolm, I want you to go into greater detail. We see these beautiful pictures at night from the decks of these two U.S. Navy vessels in the eastern Mediterranean. I am tempted to blow up a great... Ladies and gentlemen, the Foxification of MSNBC.